Dillian White splits from longtime trainer announced today. And I have a question. Is there drug testing for Dillian White versus Alexander Povetkin? Fight camp. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego. And I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We work. Sign up for the Patreon below. Does help the channel. You can also hit the YouTube channel member. We're having fun. We're doing the group Zooms. We got one coming up. So be there, be square if you're a channel member or a Patreon. I sent information to your members only or Patreon only. You know, you, you'll be able to see it on Patreon or the YouTube um, post board. Now, I want to talk about Dillian White. He just posted this. He's splitting from his longtime trainer. This is what he had to say. Okay, Dillian White says just to let everyone know mark tibbs and i are no longer working together as boxer and trainer i am training in portugal mark has a young family and his own new gym in the uk as it stands it just hasn't worked out in the way we both hoped it would mark came into my team four years ago and has helped me turn into the world-class fighter i am today mark is a great trainer and i will always be grateful to him and his dad for all that they have done seven minutes ago so this is news you know this is news they've been working together for four years he said and he helped mold him now immediately what i thought of and not to sound uh, maniacal but this begs the question is this fight going to have drug testing because you see over his shoulder, he's a WBC champion. Him and Tyson Fury, the, the current WBC champion who's involved in Glovegate 2.0. Check those videos out. Um, they've been having this tiff back and forth on social media. And he's, Dillian White has said he's not stepping out of the way for, you know, he it's contracted that he has to fight Wilder. Tyson Fury, Wilder 3. So if and when that happens, that would be the only fight that Dillian White has to legally get out of the way for him. but dillian white just there's articles that just came out in interviews where dillian white specifically said he's not going to step aside or or go easy and allow for joshua and fury to make their own fight and leave him in the dust he said he's been tracing the wbc title shot for a while you know he when wilder had the belt he was counting the days and he was saying you know 500 days 610 days 9,000 days or whatever and so on and so forth so there's some some things going on but instantly I thought of he just said I'm training in Portugal and he's the WBC person so I know for two reasons the clean boxing program with the WBC I'm curious to see if that's resumed right because we are in a pandemic still and furthermore if he's all the way in Portugal, do they have the resources that are like set up or some kind of, um, I don't know, third party company like that works with VADA and the clean boxing program and the WBC to do drug testing all the way in Portugal? Because he's, I guess, relocating or he's already there. He says, I'm training in Portugal and Mark has his own gym and a new gym in the UK. Again, I don't know why they split. It sound, he said things didn't go as planned or as we hoped it would so i'm not sure but dillian white failed a drug test and was later cleared and the whole everything about it was fishy you know if you look at it dillian white fought oscar revis they had a secret meeting unbeknownst to team revis and allowed the fight the, the uk has some real fishy business when it comes to ucad and how they go about their business but as you guys see they fought at the O2 Arena in London, July 20th. The week of the fight, Dillian White, it came up in his test that he had failed. So he had some kind of emergency hearing and Oscar Rivas's team and promoter were never notified. The public, the media was never notified of this. This is in the summer of July. And Dillian White got dropped in this fight, but he later went on to beat Oscar Rivas, 
you know, he used his jab pretty good in this fight, things like that. But it was still a drug fail. Now, it took almost half a year for them to finally comment on it. And they were allegedly investigating. But before they had came back with a conclusion on UCAD for Dillian White and what was going on with him, Eddie Hearn had already booked him a flight to Saudi Arabia to be a part of the Joshua versus Ruiz two card that he suddenly took out of New York in America where the first fight took place and decided to take it to Saudi Arabia, you know, where again, they don't have necessarily the same commissions and things set up over there because they don't always do sporting events like boxing. You haven't seen too many high profile fights head that way, even though they have a lot of resources and money, right? So Dillian White fought Marish Weck on that undercard and he was already scheduled for it. And you could tell in his offseason he had gained weight. I think he came in at a career high at the at the weigh-in. And mysteriously, after he was already booked for that that fight. And the day before his fight, UCAD came out and said he was cleared. They came out and said he was cleared. See? Dillian White cleared of doping after UCAD probe finds no violation. So it took half a year. And then they finally sent out a statement, you know, so people believe, look, December 6th. And as you've seen earlier, he failed in the summer. He failed in July. So the way it looked to a lot of people was like UCAD was like paid off or, you know, they dropped it, you know. And this is what Dillian White said. For those who believed in me, I won't forget you. To those who didn't, I won't forgive you. And I know who you are. So December 6th, that's literally the day before um Joshua right see I told you he wasn't in the the craziest shape in the in this particular fight you know because he was he was convicted well he was not convicted but he was uh he had failed a drug test right so why did it take UCAD UCAD does weird stuff why did it take UCAD so long to update anybody right why did it take so long just so you guys Anthony Joshua versus Ruiz 2 fight day. Just so you guys know, new media, I like to show you. See, December 7th, Joshua Ruiz highlights. It's even on Wikipedia. And, you know, I know some people, but here, here's the flyer. So I know some people don't like Wikipedia because you can add. See, December 7th. So how did Dillian White, all of his stuff looks backwards. How did Dillian White, before this came out on December 6th, the, literally the day before his fight, they said, hey, you can fight because we cleared you, you know, and you can't send this this letter. So that looks extremely fishy. So I'm wondering what's up with the WBC and the clean boxing program um, in this statement. You had I guess they exonerated him and said it was contaminated substances. But again, it looks weird that he's already booked for a fight against Marish Weck. And literally the day before the fight, you guys come out and finally clear his name. You know, why Why would you have somebody sitting on the shelf, gaining weight and stuff, worried about what's up with their career? Because people are lambasting them and, and, and trashing them. And then you cats dragging their feet. How long does it take to to do an investigation? There's murder cases that get solved quicker than five or six months so the whole UCAD is extremely weird they also did this with Tyson Fury where Tyson Fury failed for Nandrolone and they didn't tell him until like 16 18 months later so I don't really trust the UCAD because it seems like some funny business me personally and then now Dillian White saying he's training he left his trainer who's in the UK and he's training in Portugal so to me even though they cleared him on the charges as as I've showed you um it still looks fishy. Why did you have a meeting without Oscar Rivas? Like, why didn't you? That's what it looks like a cover up, you know, for multiple parties. And you can't blame or fault anyone like myself for feeling like that. If someone fails a drug test and you know you're innocent, then why not tell Oscar Rivas? So he at least him and his team have the option to pull out of the fight because they they can't take your word for it you know pending an investigation revis might not he has a loss now because of dillian white but had he known that dillian white failed a drug test he might have requested more money right 
he might have pulled out of the fight, said, hey, we're not chancing it. We don't know if we could trust you, you know, and he wouldn't have a loss on his record. The other issue with that's that's why it's not really savory or I can't really trust is there was a glove controversy in the Revis fight. Team Revis member details glove dispute in the white fight. See, Russ Abner, who makes rival gloves, a member of Oscar Revis's corner, see, CEO of Rival Boxing, detailed the events that prompted to their team to file an appeal with the WBC regarding the selection of gloves by Dillian White. There's already a mountain of controversy hanging over the fight, right? Because he failed the drug test. Abner, who again is the CEO and then creator of Rival, which is why you see the Rival um, logo on Oscar Rivas's uh, trunks. Abner explains that their appeal was filed before the contest took place on Saturday night, which saw Dillian White win a 12 round unanimous decision. He was also dropped in that fight and that's what secured him the WBC mandatory. Quote, it was an exciting fight, no doubt about it. We knew it was going to be a tough fight for Oscar. Dillian has proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's world-class heavyweight. He's come, in, he's come on leaps and bounds. A lot of credit for that has to go to trainer Mark Tibbs. This is an old article, and he just now announced he's leaving Mark Tibbs for the work he's done with him. On the night, Dillian White fought a very smart fight. He used his jab well, as I mentioned earlier, and he boxed the fight he needed. He had Dillian hurt in the eighth, and it looked like he was on the verge of getting him out of there, which I mentioned. Oscar himself was hurt in the second round after winning the first round, showed a lot of heart and determination throughout. So it was a good fight. But having said that, here in the Revis camp, we weren't happy with the job the referee did and with some of the other stuff that went on. We actually filed an official protest to the WBC prior to the fight because some things that happened beforehand. Our protest was filed before the boxers even entered the ring so it's not a case of sour grapes because oscar revis lost it all goes back to the day before the fight when we had the rules so all this time they don't know that he failed the drug test he popped dirty you know even though the ucad would later clear that it said we had the rules meeting and glove selection meeting with the bbb of c to be honest i can't begin to express our disappointment with everything that happened the double standard started when we brought an extra pair of gloves to the glove selection meeting and we were told we couldn't bring that pair of gloves in we asked why not and they were told it was because they had to be brought in by the promoter well our promoter vaughn mitchell was in the room with us what difference does it really make who's physically carrying the gloves the promoter or someone else to give to the promoter that's semantics anyway we ended up not getting being allowed to submit these additional gloves thankfully we didn't end up needing them but it was an example of what was to come on fight night you see this is lengthy on fight night about a half hour before we were set to go in the ring the white camp suddenly told us they were not wearing the gloves that they had selected at the glove selection meeting see i mean and and people wonder why boxing gets a bad rap at times they told us they were not wearing the gloves selected at the meeting. Not the number one pair that they selected and not the number two pair either, but another brand of gloves. You see this? Another brand of gloves. Right? Another brand of gloves that weren't even on the table at the glove selection. Of course, we protested and said, what was the point of having the glove selection meeting if you're going to wear whatever you want? At the meeting, Dillian's representative, Mark Tibbs, who we just left, had chosen the two sets of gloves and signed them off. No one said at a rules meeting, oh, by the way, if on the night you want to switch your gloves, you can. To make matters worse, not only was Dillian White allowed to wear these new gloves, but he was already gloved up and we weren't even allowed to inspect them. Wow. Bear in mind, his camp inspected our gloves. They knew what we were wearing. In contrast, we had no idea what they were using because they were allowed to pick whatever glove they wanted, tape it up and put it on. So that's crazy. It sounds like they didn't even watch the hand wrap process. I don't know. You know, don't quote me on that. Even after we were we reluctantly agreed to let them make the change, we still weren't allowed to see the gloves. It's insane and created the impression that something was going on. 
that there was something being hidden. I mean, if those were the gloves that they were going to use all along, why not select them and bring them to the glove selection meeting? What was going on? I don't get it. We saw Dillian's hands wrapped. Okay, so he did see that, but not the gloves being put on. You know, and it's funny that Tyson Fury's in the glove gate controversy, right? Fast forward to the future. This is an old article. I will cite this in the description box. So a lot of people in the Tyson Fury glove gate, another UK fighter, they said, oh, you know, BT Sport released this clip of JD is from Wilder's team, you know, co-trainer watching Tyson Fury get his hands wrapped. But you see all the things that Russ Abner had to go through, right? You see all the things he had to go through and they brought some mysterious gloves that were never that weren't the glove A or B one or two that was agreed upon, you know, because they have a pair of glove. And if, you know, for whatever reason, they can't use glove pair one, then they go to glove pair two. But there was a third glove and he said he wasn't able to see it after. So he says and you see it on the screen. We saw Dillian White's hands wrapped, but not the gloves being put on. So for all the people who are showing that BT sport clip. Here's another example of boxing getting it wrong, where even if you see a guy get his hands wrapped, stuff like this, this funny business, this monkey business is going going on behind scenes where he he admits we did not get to see the gloves put on. We just see his hands getting wrapped. But if you, it doesn't mean you're wearing like Antonio Margarito, he got busted for dipping the wraps or whoever Capitillo dis, dip, dipped the wraps in plaster of Paris to harden them. But if your gloves themselves have been gutted or tampered with or skinned, then that's something different. He said, we couldn't examine the gloves. And when we protest, we were told, quote, too bad by the board of officials. And these are the same board of officials that later cleared him the night before his next fight. So it, this all this looks suspect to me, bro. You, you guys, I don't know, different morals or different moral compass or whatever you might feel different but this all looks bad i don't know what they're doing in the uk effectively they said they weren't going to make him take the gloves off and they're already ready and the fight's about to start well it takes 90 seconds at most to put on a pair of gloves so why not allow us the courtesy of being able to see the glove all that happened was everything ended up being shrouded in controversy and didn't look transparent it says we filed a protest blah 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 so that's what dillian white and the guy that was there for his trainer, Mark Tibbs, he's now splitting with. And now he's training in Portugal. So again, with all that stuff going on in his second to last fight, I guess, with Revis and failing a drug test and then later allegedly being cleared of it. Um, I'm wondering if they're drug testing. But beyond that, you have his opponent that he's fighting, Alexander Povetkin, for this fight camp, you see. And he failed a drug test, not once, but he failed two in, in one year, right? And this is a box office pay-per-view. So for Dillian White to, to stay in the WBC, are they doing drug testing? You know, because again, he just confirmed that he left his trainer. He left his trainer. He's a WBC contestant and combatant or whatever. And he's the mandatory. So I'm, I'm just curious, will he... Will he have drug testing in Portugal? Like, do, are they set up for Portugal? Alexander Povetkin fails second test, right? Alexander Povetkin has been banned and definitely after failing a second drug test in a year. Boom. This is the BBOC. So everything I'm saying is true. But in case you, you know, had doubts or maybe new to boxing, this is what's going on. This is who he's fighting. And I'm just curious. So if you guys have more information, uh, hopefully Eddie Hearn puts out a statement. Are they doing VADA testing? You know, the WBC maybe clears that up with the clean boxing program. So and Dillian White also failed a drug test in a different sport. He was a uh, like kickboxing or something like that. He and he blamed it on a supplement before. So both guys have technically pat like had drug tests that came up. And they failed. They had banned substances in their system. So with the WBC clean boxing program, hopefully Eddie Hearn clarifies his fight camp or the WBC. Let me know what you guys think. And also, what do you think of Dillian White leaving his trainer? They were together four years. Why? Who is he going to train with, you know, for a Povetkin fight? And what are your thoughts about the fight being on pay-per-view? 
Also, get ESPN Plus pay-per-view for Jorge Masvidal versus Usman. Should be a good fight this Saturday. If you're interested in getting ESPN Plus pay-per-view, UFC 251. Use my link in the description. It does help the channel. Or you can get ESPN Plus as a standalone app for your documentaries. They got boxing, archive fights, UFC archive fights, a bunch of shows. Get it as a standalone app or even bundle it. ESPN Plus, Hulu, and Disney Plus. All three apps, one price, twelve ninety nine. Let me know what you guys think. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego. Signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.